Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online head consultant. The number one question I get, whether it's email or something like that, they'll dads will always ask, moms will even ask, what? How do I get my player to keep everything back? You know, we we understand how important the sequence of the swing is, but we can't get my player to keep his elbow back or his hands back or hers hands or elbow back, and um, and you know it's very frustrating for some dads. And then when you watch some YouTube videos where guys are talking about the back elbow. Uh, they'll talk about it in terms of sequence, and it'll make you think that your player is not disciplined, that uh, your player just is trying to drive you crazy. Look, uh, you just got to keep your elbow back. If you do that, you're going to be a better hitter. And the reality is, is that um, if you asked any of these guys, for instance, Eric Thames, uh, Joey Gallo, Eric Hosmer, and all these were on 30 clubs for 30 days. That's why I've just put these up here. So you can look them up too on MLB.com if you'd like to. Uh, is, uh, you know, if you ask them, hey, Joey, all the way to your weight shift here, you keep everything back, right? And uh, I was wondering if you could give me a drill for keeping everything back. And he would probably look like, look at you like you were crazy. And he would say something along the line, I'm just trying to keep my hands back. And um, one thing that's really important to understand about the elbows position, right? A lot of guys will have different um, places that they want to hit from. But generally speaking, the elbow being back behind the top hand is more for is a, a range of motion uh, type of thing, right? It increases my range of motion if I have it back. Now, you can hit baseballs with your elbow into your rib cage. Um, you see it a lot in some of the 1970s uh, swings and so forth where you know guys were told to just get their elbow down in their side and, and hit from there. Uh, and you can hit from there, but what happens is, is it, it decreases your range of motion, right? If you're going to hit a ball far and hard, um, you, you want your top hand arm to be in a position where it's got more range of motion. Not to mention, if you're going to hit an outside pitch really well, right? Um, now, this isn't the case for every player, but your top hand arm has to go in that direction, right? It's, uh, and then obviously in an inside pitch where the goal of the top hand arm is we're trying to get behind the ball with the top hand arm, right? And so this is why these guys naturally keep it back because they understand what the role of the top hand arm is. So if you watch Eric Thames here, it was Carlos Pena in the cage talking about his approach. He says he likes to work on his top hand arm. He says, um, if I feel like I'm, I'm getting too straight through it with my top hand arm, then when I put two hands on the bat, I know it's going to be good. Right, uh, Joey Gallo talked about it a little bit differently. In his, this is how he starts all of his BP. You notice he's not using his legs. It's a very simple thing he's trying to do here. He says about the first ten balls, right? He's working on a feeling, and what he's working on is being a top hand hitter, right? He's working on putting backspin on the ball. Not my words, his words, and that's exactly what the result is here, right? And so what you're going to see here when he hits the ball is a uh, is an extension that's down right here. This shows that he was trying to put backspin on the ball, right? So if you watch Joey Gallo swing with two hands, and this, here's the real problem in the uh, the guys that have hijacked the discussion, right? And they've made everyone believe that uh, every guy's swinging up, and if you're telling your kid any different than that, then you're, you're a bozo. Well, <laughs> the reality is, is that the barrel moving up in most cases, yes. But uh, my job as a hitting instructor, right, working with a lot of kids, is sometimes I have to challenge players with feelings, right? And when you watch a guy like Joey Gallo that I know, based on the language he uses when he talks about hitting, every coach challenged him to hit down on the ball, right? To a certain degree, that's you can hear it in his conversation. And yet, we all watch this and we go, well, he's not hitting down. Well, for the most part, that's certainly what it would look like. But the reality is, is that guys that were down and through growing up, the ones that learned to use their bottom hand in coordination with that, their bottom hand arm, I should say, that mechanism, right, they're, they hit balls really far. <laughs> the guys that never used it, learned to use their bottom hand arm, right, they're, if they're top hand only, their top hand arm is probably doing something like what Joey Gallows is doing here, and the front side is not really helping to get behind the ball. In other words, the bottom hand arm. And so these guys are the ones that are hit balls on the ground and so forth, right? Well, Joey Gallo has learned to use both mechanisms, right? But he's still trying to, I guarantee you, he's still trying to feel the same feeling with his top hand arm here as he felt here, 
the bottom hand arm dictates a lot about the barrel's path, right? It's on the opposite side of the rotation. This mechanism, this bottom hand arm mechanism, it's on the other side, the rotation of the body. I use that word carefully. But the body is obviously turning, right? So that top, that front shoulder, right? Look, it's going up. This mechanism is attached to that, right? And you learn how to use this, you're going to get behind balls easier, right? So you don't have the, the, the worst thing you can do with a top hand hitter, right? Like Joey Gallo, let's say all his life he's been told just to use his top hand arm and hit down on balls, right? And then suddenly I show him a video of all the pros and I say, hey, Joey, well, you're doing it wrong. Look at all these guys swinging up. And um, instead of talking to him about the mechanism that's actually going to help him elevate the ball, the one that's been absent from his swing his entire career, and I just say, hey, top hand hitter, swing up more. What are they going to do? They're going to use their top hand arm to try to swing up more which gets us to exactly where kids are right now, right? This is what kids are trying to do. They're always trying to get behind the ball with their top hand arm. This is why they come into the slot early, right? Because they're going to rotate their top hand arm at the ball. They're not trying to drive the top hand arm through the ball, right? So where do you go with this? Well, this is a suggestion. I like to show, you know, I, I, a lot of you know that I don't give a lot of drills out online because there's a lot of room for interpretation. And, you know, one guy can go in the garage and have 10,000 swings with his kid and do them all wrong, right? But this is a very simple idea, right? What is, if your kid was to do um, this drill, what are they probably going to do? I'm literally trying to pass over the top of the ball. Now, why, first off, the question should be, well, why aren't you just hitting the ball? If you try to get young players to do a one-handed drill like this, they're going to loop the barrel with their top hand even more so they can flip the bat faster at it. That's, that shouldn't be the goal. When I think of the top hand arm for young players as more of a physical therapy where we're trying to get them to understand what is this movement supposed to feel like, right? And I'm trying to get them to pass straight over the ball without hitting it to my full extension. And why are we going straight over the ball? It takes a lot of control, uh, for young players, and see how far I put the tee out front as well, it takes a lot of control for young players to feel they have to grab every muscle in their top hand arm to make sure that this barrel doesn't leak and hit the ball, right? So again, it's like physical, physical therapy for your top hand arm. If you feel this and you understand this movement as a hitter, right, you're not going to want to drop your elbow down early, right? This is a completely opposite feeling where I'm trying to feel I'm in control a little bit more of my top hand arm. I'm going to, as Eric Thames said, I'm going to try to put butts in the seats with my top hand arm so I can drive with my top hand arm, right? And so a player understands this, then suddenly you're going to see that that elbow slotting problem is not really going to be that much of a problem once they feel this and go, ah, that's what I want to do. And so I'll have players go back with two hands, and I'll say after they get that feeling, and I'll say try to feel that same thing with your top hand arm. And you'll see that they'll start trying to hit balls with their top hand arm, right, instead of uh, rotating it or whatever that kids normally do. They kind of – they literally get from their, uh, from their elbow, right, to their top hand. They're rotating this at the ball, right. And it's just the reality – that sometimes you're going to see guys are going to look like, you know, if you see a pro video and you say, oh, well, he's rotating his forearm at the ball. They're all trying to get behind the ball with their top hand arm. Now, I'm not even trying to make the argument that they're all trying to put backspin or they're all trying to hit down on the ball. But they're obviously trying to get behind the ball with their top hand arm so that they can drive the ball more efficiently. Right. And so. When you, what you can do with this, again, it's physical therapy. Please, dads, don't go nuts and say, you know, we're going to build a, do this at 100%. And this is a 20% feeling. I'm trying to see how short of a move I can make with my top hand from here. From the top, from here, I'm literally trying to go short. That way, and then over the top of the ball. When they start building that feeling in, maybe letting them take some reps with two hands like we did there. Or take it to the level that Eric Hosmer does here. Now, he's not working on his elbow like uh, we are, or keeping his hands back, right? But I want you to notice something here on the ground. I loved this idea uh, in that video where he's talking about this helps him in his first flips emphasize the importance of the ground. Notice he didn't talk about dragging his back leg. He didn't talk about any of that. He didn't talk about turning his hips even. Um, some of those things happen, right? But what I'm saying is that he's, he's working on staying in the ground. Now, where does this pertain to what we're talking about? 
one of the things that you see with kids is they, you know, when they stride, right, they, um, that's when this elbow starts coming down. What this can do is just establish, not, this doesn't, I'm not trying to make your player a no strider. It's just a feeling of having everything back, right? Real nice stack here, ready to go, and then throw a ball and let them hit from there. They're not striding. And then what, getting them comfortable when they're unloading the bat that they have the elbow and everything already back. Now, in my experience, uh, it's very important, I think, to understand something. You don't want to talk to young players about their elbow, right? Continue to build in the purpose of the top hand arm. Talk about the feeling of what they're supposed to be feeling with the top hand arm, but do not uh, really uh, put a lot of emphasis on their elbow because there's guys on YouTube right now that are talking about the perfect Major League Baseball sequence, and they all have their elbow back, so you should have your elbow back. These are guys that just they are teaching what they see. They don't understand the role of the top hand arm, and that's why these guys keep their top hand arm back. Work on their top hand arm movement understanding its purpose and then you're going to see your player is going to make a heck of an improvement uh, with that arm but if they're just if you're just challenging them to keep their elbow back and they're not doing it and you're pulling your hair out and you're going ah oh, they're just not disciplined enough they don't want to listen to me I'm going to take them to another lesson that's not going to do it understand the purpose of the top hand arm and they're going to want to attack from there Ron Sullivan your online hit consultant thanks